look into that mirror daily and study well your reflection. This is the advice of St. Clair of Assisi in a personal letter that she wrote to Sister Agnes of Prague, which happens to be in today's office of the readings for the memorial of St. Clair of Assisi, which we are celebrating today, August 11. Happy feast day to all the poor Clare sisters. The advice of looking into the mirror brought back to my memory a personal retreat that I made in the guest house of the poor Clare's monastery in my hometown in Betis, Pampanga. I was just a young priest back then, so that's more than 30 years ago now. I was getting dressed for an early morning mass and I was going to comb my hair in the bathroom and then realized there was no mirror in the bathroom. So I looked around in the bedroom and still found no mirror. That's strange, I said to myself. Everything that I needed, including towel, soap, and toothpaste, including slippers, they were all there, except a mirror. So I went down to the sacristy thinking that there would surely be a mirror there. There was none. So I asked the sister who served me breakfast after Mass, why I couldn't find a single mirror in the guest house. She laughed. And I tell you, these contemplative nuns really laugh heartily. She laughed and she said to me, Sorry, Father, we don't have mirrors in the whole monastery. Only Christ is our mirror. I thought back then that she was joking. After I read the letter of St. Clair to Sister Agnes of Prague, I understood. St. Clair uses the word mirror seven times in that letter as an analogy for Christ. She said, in this mirror, blessed poverty, holy humility, and ineffable love are also reflected. With the grace of God, the whole mirror will be your source of contemplation. Well, I suppose the contemplatives also do it as an act of self-denial, maybe to keep the sisters from being vain and preoccupied with their physical looks. In Jesus, St. Clair says, we can see the best version of ourselves. We are supposed to be ourselves reflections of Him who is the best image and likeness of God and of humankind. Today's gospel is basically saying the same thing. The disciples wanted to know who the greatest was in the kingdom of heaven. And in reply, Jesus called a little child and set that child in their midst as if he was pointing them to a mirror. St. Clair's reflection reminds me of another great woman in church history, also a contemplative nun, the Carmelite St. Therese of Lisieux, otherwise known as Therese of the Child Jesus. You know, she developed a whole spirituality around the child, the infant Jesus. And she called it the little way or the path of littleness. Not only does Jesus invite his disciples to see in a little child the best version of ourselves, he also asks us to pay attention to them to put them at the center of our priorities, 
as well as the last, the least, and the lost. Whether as individuals or as families or as communities, if we want to build a truly humane society. Do you remember that scene when the disciples themselves were reprimanded by Jesus for driving away the children? I suppose they got irritated by the kids. You know how kids can be. They can sometimes get noisy and unruly. Well, in today's gospel, Jesus is even giving a stern warning to those who despise or abuse or scandalize the children. He says, they have angels in heaven who are always ready to report to the Heavenly Father. Be careful. Our first reading from the prophet Ezekiel sort of balances the tendency to idealize the child image. The prophet Ezekiel is addressed by God as if he were a stubborn child or one who was behaving like a squeamish brat who was picky or choosy with food. God says to the prophet, Hey, listen, son of man, Listen to what I say. Don't be hard-headed. Open your mouth and take in what I am about to give you. The image that comes to my mind is that of an American kid who is being asked to eat a plate of broccoli. And the kid says, Yuck! It looks disgusting. Well, in our first reading, the prophet Ezekiel is being given not a plate of veggies, but a scroll with words of lamentations written on it. Remember how even the prophet Jeremiah behaved this way? How Jeremiah complained to God because the words that the Lord was giving to him for proclamation were mostly unpleasant oracles of doom and judgment of angry words that made him unpopular and got him into trouble and remember how the prophet Jeremiah one day resolved to just keep his mouth shut the next time the Lord wanted to put words again in his mouth he said no I'll just shut up. I find the situation funny. God sounds like a mother who says, Now, now, don't give me that attitude, my boy. Open your mouth. This is good food. You better learn to eat your veggies if you want to be healthy. It can't be chocolate and ice cream for you every day, you know? So the prophet Ezekiel obediently opens his mouth. Except that what God gives him is not a spoonful of broccoli, but a scroll with words of doom, groanings, and woes. And he tries to overcome his disgust. But to his great surprise, what seemed disgusting actually turned out to be delicious. Perhaps it is the same with us. It cannot always be good times and sweet words and pleasant words. I know many people come to church, they always expect to be entertained, pleasant words, you know funny words, we also have to learn to take the bitter pill of denunciation, of redemptive pain and suffering. Not only can it serve as medicine for our spoiled souls, 
It can also be as nourishing as ampalaya and malunggay. I don't know why Americans say yak for broccoli. It's not even bitter. Maybe we should feed them ampalaya. That is how we grow and become beautiful like Christ. That is how we gradually become the best version of ourselves. Brothers and sisters, mga kababayan, I know a lot of unpleasant things are happening in our country today. Did not one author once say, we get the kind of government we deserve? Are not the kind of leaders to whom we entrust the future of our country also a reflection of who we are as a people? There is one song in the movie, The Lost Horizon, entitled Reflections. It says, when you look at yourself, do you like what you see? If you like what you see, you're the person you should be. Because your reflection reflects in everything you do. And everything you do reflects on you. Well, perhaps we can try what St. Clair recommends in her letter to Sister Agnes. To look at no mirror other than Christ on the cross. If we want to eventually see the best and the most beautiful version of ourselves.